Guido. Hey, congratulations for your documentary, Green Wave. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Oh, more than that, uh, congratulations for having this showcase on Crackle. How, how does it feel for you? Um, incredible, honestly. I didn't expect it, um, you know, first of all, to, you know, win an award at the LA International Film Festival, but then uh, getting picked up um, by Crackle this quickly, you know. Um, usually these things, they can um, take a long time until it, it, they find an audience. Um, but I just also feel like this might be a very timely um, project. Um, people could really use a little inspiration in their lives right now. That, that, is, that is true. That is true. We, we, do, we do need more inspirational uh, documentaries or movies uh, like what you just came up with here. So, uh, so let, let's start at the beginning here. What, uh, what sparked you to do this uh, documentary? Where, where did you first heard the story from? I saw a little uh, news clip about it and uh, my wife, I remember, came into, into the room and I just like turned around to her with, tear, with tears in my eyes actually and said like, I have to do this film. This is going to be my ne next project. And she went like, okay, you know, kind of like, I mean, she's, you know, she's used to me being very like passionate about things. And um, yeah, so I had reached out then to, um, you know, Anne Mulkey, which is the mom of, of Luis um, Mulkey. And she, um, she was really on board to right away, like start interviewing. And a week later, honestly, I already, um, you know, booked uh, tickets out there, not knowing who would be actually willing to talk to me and went out on a limp essentially and to follow this amazing story. So how, how did you gather your interview subjects? I mean, you know, a lot of people, this was long ago. A lot of people probably moved on. Yeah, yeah, uh, 12, 15 years ago, yeah. Well, um, one of the teachers there at, at the high school, um, Missy Campbell, she's very well liked there by the students. And she actually had teamed, out, um, teamed up with uh, Louis Smokey back in the day to really make an impact on these students um, early in their lives. Because a lot of these uh, boys, um, they came fr from um, kind of rough backgrounds, not having a father figure in their life and not doing well in school, including AJ Green, um, very bad uh, grades. And a lot of uh, teachers had um, counted him out already and didn't think he would even um, make it into college. Um, and um, Louis Smokey essentially, you know, saw the potential of these students that they needed a little help and guidance and became a substitute teacher as well and um, made sure that the grades would be in order. You know, there's this story of uh, him, you know, constantly dragging um, school desks out on the basketball court, court to have them study while others got to play and really making sure that they would be um, winners, not just on the court, but off the court, you know. And so, yeah, Missy Campbell has been a big um, help in gathering essentially those um, former players and um, for me to having subjects to interview. And um, a lot of them, you know, obviously they weren't just interviewed, but also went back into time and, and I followed them around, um, you know, important places um, in, their, in, their, in their story where like they went back to the old gym and, and you know, reminiscing on the times where, you know, Louis Smokey had them look up um, at the banners that they, that they weren't there yet, you know, and envisioning them that one day they would win the championship title. And he really believed strongly in them that they could, you know, build a, a wave, you know, and make, make something happen. Was, was that your entirely your idea to uh, have them walk, walk back through, uh, through history? Yes, I, I really wanted to connect this to the now, nowadays, not just like, you know, kind of make it a, um, a story about the past, but how and how this legacy still is continuing on and how these boys are still making waves. I mean, you know, the title also, I thought was really interesting that, you know, um, coming from the mascot of, of, um, of the school, the green wave, but in the beginning, there was no wave. It was flat, not even a ripple until Coach Mookie came along and started believing in these boys and, and making sure that they would bring that kind of um, firefighter mentality of brotherhood and, and family um, to, you know, school and to sports. And, you know, the school is still very big on, on those aspects of like, you know, respect, brotherhood, love. Um, so he really um, made a big impact on the, on the school, on the community. 
Um, and I and I feel that still that wave is still growing on when you look at um, Marlon Pryor, for example, he's now a coach at school there. Um, AJ Green obviously doing amazing things um, in the NFL right now with the Cardinals and, and all that. I'm still texting with him every time he, you know, wins, you know, wins and does well. And, you know, he's he's really excited about his new team as well. We're were you surprised and amazed that you got AJ Green to even um, you know do this uh, documentary? I, I I could imagine he was he's a quite busy man today. Very busy, yeah. In fact, very busy. You know, but I guess people talk, and once I started like interviewing people, and they saw really that I was really passionate about um, not just telling the miracle story, but really going deeper into. Um, the complexities of their characters of like how far they have come and, you know, overcome things in their lives. Cause that's really the inspiration. And me as a filmmaker, I feel like I'm not here just to entertain, but also inspire and make people think. And this is the type of story that I feel resonates with a lot of people. And um, it's a very timely story to tell as well. I feel. So after all these years, you still see that legacy of uh, Luis um Monkey um, all over the school then. Absolutely, and the community as well. Um, people still remember him um, and the Charleston Nine, all the fo um, fallen firefighters of the Charleston Nine. People don't forget, you know, and that, this is one of those stories where you can see also like that something positive can come out of a tragedy, you know, and you see that all over America. That, that's always been the most impressive thing to me as a, you know, as a foreigner, essentially, as a European. Um, that Americans, they really um, overcome obstacles and, and come together in, in times of tragedy. And, um, you know, there's, that's kind of the lesson always there that you can, um, you know, grow something bigger and better out of something that um, seems to be disheartening and, and, you know, could bring you down, you know. So how, how this is a, I found I found out that this could be somewhat a difficult subject to uh, to talk about, especially for these your interview subjects. Um, yeah. Was it easy to convince them to participate, and how did you make them comfortable in talking about this? About it? First of all, I mean, I come, you know, basically, I mean, since I'm a cameraman and um, you know, lighting guy and director, so I can do a lot of things by myself. And so I don't have this um, full-blown camera crew with me, but it's a very intimate setting. And, you know, for a lot of players, um, initially they might have been hesitant and obviously becoming very emotional, but it was very therape uh, therapeutical essentially for them, they said afterwards, being able to talk about it and really kind of getting a little closure on that because they hadn't really uh, discussed those things. And um to them, you know, AJ, um, Moki is still a big part in their life. They have not forgotten and they will never forget, you know, the impact that he made on their lives. So what, what was the most common thing that uh, you found that your interview subjects um, mostly mentioned about uh, Moki? Well, they saw him as a three-in-one. So he wasn't just a coach, but a mentor in their lives. I mean, for a lot of them, they were, he was actually a father figure. And the fact that he chose to become a substitute teacher at school, um, you know, ensure, ensuring basically of them having good grades. And, you know, he literally sat there for weeks in AJ, AJ Green's classroom next to him, ensuring that he would uh, bring the grades to be able to get to college. And he did this for a lot of boys. It wasn't just about winning on the court, but also off the court and um, leaving a bigger impact without asking anything in return, you know. Now, how, how did you gather your, uh, your you, you know, the uh, past footage uh, for your film? Because not only you got the, the footage of, uh, you know, the tragedy, you got the footage of the basketball game, and you also included a footage of, uh, you know, his, his life, especially around the high school. Yeah. Well, that was obviously a hard thing, uh, convincing everybody to participate and being able to gather, especially the championship footage that, you know, was basically all vaulted away. And, um, you know, I think it's really about once people realize that you're honest, um, you know, about your film, you know, and this is not really, you know, about a big paycheck or something, but really it's a, it's a um, small story with a big heart, you know, and I think people understood that. And that's where, you know, that's why they're, I guess, also rooting for this film to, find hopefully an audience and, and really inspire a lot of people. 
that tell tell me more about this basketball game because you know one of the things that a lot of people don't care about is probably high school basketball except for the high school that actually won the national championship but this this was a sort of like a a miracle itself and the way how you presented it it was it was quite a surprise well yeah um you know without giving too much away but i mean it, it's going down to the last uh, shot you know and it's this it it's essentially kind of um how the whole story was there was like so many ups and downs and you know the whole championship run had so many ups and downs every every game counted every point counted and that you know it's um kind of symbolic of like you know what the boys had to overcome it was never easy they were always the underdogs and you know i mean they started out as a team that would not win any games and having empty bleachers until the point where, you know, the lines were outside the door and um, the last game, you know, they brought in like these little plastic fire helmets and the um, ML Moki, uh, Louis Moki letters. And um, that really showed how much um, basketball and the spirit of Moki had grown into this big wave, you know, that's why the title, the green wave is so, um, so perfect in a way for this because it kind of encompasses the whole um, spectrum of like, you know, growth of these boys, you know. Did you ever uh, discover where that um, that fireman's helmet is and that mysterious basketball is today? Yeah, it's still at school. I mean, they really still um, value the helmet and respect, um, you know, what Louis Smoky has uh, left behind. I mean, they even um, changed the the gym, you know, changed the name of the gym to the firehouse in honor of Louis Smoky. And that shows you a lot of like, what of an impact he has uh, left on, on the school and the community. Most excellent. And, and, and for yourself, I, I, I've looked through your, you know, your filmography and there's a lot of reality and documentaries. Why, why do you love this, uh, you know, this part of the industry so much? Um, I believe because of its authenticity. And, you know, I feel always like I'm always rooting for the, for the little guy and, and these stories that, you know, about superheroes that are, you know, the heroes next door instead of like, you know, the Marvel uh, film. So I, I usually gravitate to like the smaller films, the independent films, um, because, you know, I think there's so many untold stories um, that need to be uncovered. And, you know, you, you know, you have the ability to put your lens on, you know, and it doesn't take a huge budget to tell these stories. And um, it's all about the passion and then finding an audience and them discovering, you know, those, those golden nuggets in a way. So you already have your uh, next uh, documentary or story lined up in, in your head? Well, I mean, I'm currently actually on a new Netflix series called The Agency. So um, the producers allowed me to break away from set for a little bit. Um, yeah, I mean, I have a, um, a couple of projects, um, you know, feature films actually in this uh, uh, case, like narrative feature films that are based also on true stories. And um, yeah, I, I, I always um, like... Uh, films that are based on true stories and so that's always going to be my my focus most excellent well guido let, let me um, wrap it up with one last question with you when um audiences finally watch the green wave on crackle what was the one, one most important takeaway that you hope that they walk away with after viewing your film um well that uh something good can come out of a tragedy essentially um people people come together um, in, a, in a big way in, in times of like tragedy. And I think now we're in a, in a time where, you know, things are a little bit dicey, um, you know, and, and people need kind of an inspiration. Um, and these kind of stories that uplift the spirit, I think are ultimately very important, um, you know, to come up on top, you know, and really believe in ourselves um, as Americans that we all, um, are one, you know, one country, and we all um, overcome incredible things. I think uh, you, you did an excellent documentary on the Green Wave. Uh, you told Thank you so an, much. You told a fascinating story. I think it's your editing process was 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 so intriguing. So, hey, thank Appreciate you it. very much. Thank you very much for uh, speaking to us, uh, having this conversation about the Green Wave. Can't wait to see what what you come up with next. Awesome. Thank you so much. Hey, thank you.